Hi friends! You ever wonder what a friction peg is? A turnagosh? Or a peghead? Well, if you don't know what those things are, today we're talking about tuners on Hurdy Gurdies. I'm George Leverett of Alterwin Music and you're watching Hurdy Gurdy World. Today we're going to talk about tuners on hurdy-gurdies. Now you, you might be rolling your eyes out there thinking, oh, what a boring topic. Who could possibly care about tuners on hurdy-gurdies? I promise we'll try to make this interesting and we'll throw in some hacks along the way that will help you with your instrument depending on what kind of tuner you have. The first kind of tuner we're going to talk about are friction pegs. These are basically violin pegs. They are tapered. They're wide at one end and get narrower at the other. The way they're mounted in the instrument, I've got a dummy board to demonstrate. You see a, a hole is drilled and then we use a special tool to cut the hole to the right taper. You see how my reamer here is, is wider at one end and gets narrower just like the pig. And I can use that and kind of fiddle with it till I get just the right exact precise fit. That peg fits in that hole and is held in place by friction. There we go. Get a nice close-up look. The way these work best is when they're jammed in really good and tight. If they're not jammed in quite tight enough, uh, they can tend to pop loose unexpectedly. Uh, the string tension will unwind them suddenly. Uh, that's always exciting. We were on stage one time in the 1990s and Anwen, my wife's first hurdy-gurdy, had friction pegs. And of course, on stage right there, a, peb, a peg popped loose and the instrument went out of tune pretty dramatically right mid-song. Uh, good old friction pegs. Now, they're not all bad. There is a way to work with them. The first aspect of uh, that we'll talk about is a turnagosh. Uh, the friction peg I mentioned a moment ago, the harder you jam it in there, the, the less prone it is to popping loose unexpectedly. Again, I reiterate, it's just a, the peg jammed into the hole and then the string is tied around it. Now you can jam it in really, really, really super hard and that'll guarantee it won't pop loose, but that also guarantees it's going to be difficult to turn. Well, one hack a lot of players do is a tool called a turnagosh. Uh, this is just a piece of wood with a little cutout at the end. Fits right over the violin peg and that way you can get some good leverage it on it when you're cranking. So if it becomes too hard to turn, you use your turnagosh and you can wrench it and get a, get a little more purchase on the, the tuner while you're adjusting. Uh, older hurdy-gurdies tend to have friction pegs, especially historic ones. You tend to see them very frequently in the violin world. Violin tuners are pretty much all friction pegs. You, you can hear I don't have it in there really good. If I let go, hear, hear how dramatically it drops down. So I have to, just like a moment ago I mentioned, I have to jam it in there kind of good to, to hold its tune. Anyway, that covers friction pegs. We have the uh, tapered hole and the tapered peg and they fit together. The next kind of tuner we're going to talk about are geared tuners. When we talk about geared tuners, the most common kind of tuner we're talking about are guitar tuners. As you can see on this hurdy-gurdy, we have some guitar tuners mounted in the headstock. Now, these are geared because they have a gear ratio. These particular tuners have a gear ratio of 15 to 1. What that means is that for every 15 turns of the grip, the post to which the string is tied is going to turn one time. So 15 to 1 gear ratio. I'll demonstrate. You can really get good microfine control over these kind of tuners. Now I'm just plucking it. I don't have the wheel going, so. So 
So you get an idea about how that works and what the term geared tuner means. I mentioned a second ago that you can get some good microfine control over the tuning of each string. Uh, the great thing about geared tuners is that they also don't pop loose spontaneously. So that aspect of friction pegs is entirely not present with geared tuners. Geared tuners are pretty handy. Um, I personally like them and use them on all my hurdy-gurdies. Um, guitar tuners, some people don't like guitar tuners in that they want something more traditional looking like a violin peg, but functionally more like a geared tuner. And now we're going to talk about a third option called peg heads. Here we have a picture of a peg head and a violin peg or a friction tuner uh, in the same shot. Hopefully you can kind of get a sense for the differences. As you can see, the friction tuner has a smooth straight bore where it kind of jams into the wood, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, into a hole that matches the, the taper of the peg. On the other side, you can see the peg head. It has little thread mounts that screws and is glued in, into the wood, the headstock of the instrument. The grip, the part you grab with your fingers, actually turns independently of the rest of the shaft. Uh, peg heads are great in that they have the traditional look of a violin peg. So if that's important to you that it looks authentic, you can have that look. But peg heads are actually geared. They have a gearing ratio of four to one, meaning for every four turns of the, the headstock grip there, that the post turns one time. And that's the post is where the string is tied onto. Let's switch over to a view of a live instrument. And you can see here's what they look like installed in an instrument. Here's the peg head out of the instrument, mounted right in there. Um, as I mentioned a second ago, they're geared, so you can still dial them in quite precisely. Uh, unlike friction pegs, they don't pop loose spontaneously, so you have the benefits of more of a guitar tuner there. Uh, one thing about peg heads is that they can jam up or be very loose. They're actually designed to mimic the feel of friction pegs. So with peg heads, if it's too loose, you can work the head downwards while you press, and it'll become more difficult to turn. If it's too difficult to turn, you can just wiggle the peg upwards and it gets looser and looser. You can see that if I work it upwards too much, it doesn't hold. It wants to pop loose. So there, I press down just a little bit to firm it up in there pretty snug. One thing about peg heads you should know, unlike friction pegs where you can use a turnagosh, do not use a turnagosh on peg heads because the grips, the parts you use with your fingers, are actually a separate piece from the rest of the shaft. Um, I've had some repairs come in where people will wrench down really super hard on their peg head and actually break off the grip. Uh, it's actually a pretty easy repair. It takes maybe three to five minutes. However, it's kind of a hassle if you have to go through it. So if you're looking at a hurdy-gurdy and you have peg heads you don't want to get a turn of gosh. If you have a hurdy-gurdy with tr standard friction pegs, you can actually retrofit peg heads into the holes that the friction pegs go into. So you can swap out friction pegs for peg heads, although that's something you will need a luthier to do. You can't do it very easily on your own, and it takes some specialized tools. All right, friends, I think that covers the ins and outs of tuners on hurdy-gurdies, short and sweet this week. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments or you can shoot us a message. Hopefully this video is helpful. If so, maybe give it a like and keep an eye on our YouTube channel for more videos in the future. Thanks for being around. We'll see you soon.